Hi everyone. Uh, so another interview, mock interview. Today we have Ranjit who has around 15 years of IT experience and we will try to see, assess where he stands, give him some guidance if I can and that sort of thing. So we'll try to make or ask some questions which are relevant for various roles. There is not much of a difference nowadays between a junior entry level or an architect. People have to understand different best practices that usually you would expect an architect to know. But even as a DevOps engineer, when you're interacting with people, cloud engineer, interacting with architects, your stakeholders, you have to understand a lot of those things. So we'll try to make it useful for every role, every experience level. So do watch it till the end. So Ranjit, um, if you can brief a little bit about yourself, um, what sort of experience you bring, tell me a little bit about yourself, what sort of projects you have been doing, and especially your last one or two projects, your key skill set that you bring and key responsibilities that you have been handling. Sure. Uh, hello, my name is Ranjit Patnaik. I am working in DHC Technology as a DevOps engineer. And also, additionally, I'm taking the role of module lead of one of these uh, application is retailer transition settlement platform. And the last 10 years, I'm working with this uh, client cell, which is a oil and gas leader in the industry. And I work uh, for our client for various project till now. And I I have involved uh, in this application recent from means last uh, four to five years I'm working on that. And this is a critical uh, application. And in this application, we are processing more than 24 countries uh, uh, card transaction. And it and every day we are running the batch for these 24 countries, and it has been settled into our application. And this is based Java based application, and we are we are using this Tipco Jasper soft report, which generate the generate the internal reports for our application. And I started my cloud journey in this project, uh, where I took some uh, responsibility to implement a CI CD pipeline from the scratch. And this was my first uh, uh, pipeline in this project. And uh, and right now, uh, somehow we have implemented new new tools uh, to our uh, CI CD pipelines. And my responsibility is to monitor uh, the system performance and troubleshoot an issue uh, while uh, uh, pipeline will be start running. And I I'm always keep in mind that I will follow all the uh, DevOps practice and successful deliver. And in same time, I always engage my uh, client. If any issue, I will take promptly, uh, get that issue into efficient manner. And uh, yeah. OK, good. Uh, so when you said you accept payments from multiple countries, so can I assume that your software that you are managing the application deployed in various regions, et cetera? Yeah, actually, it was earlier uh, deployed into three different regions, Asia and EMEA and uh, AMS. Right. Uh, now we have a uh, club together into all the three region to one region. But okay. but uh, yeah, but even though also we are generating this report for the three different region because we have a, a user for the our cell for three different regions. So depend upon that uh, uh, regions, we are generating this uh, uh, S3 bucket to place Five our regions, files. Three regions to one region? Uh, actually, due to this cost optimization and for the billing uh, for the cell, uh, our client, so they ask us to make, uh, for that only we got the uh, project, uh, to make, instead of that running to different region, to make club together into one region, okay. to do the settlement into one system, one platform. Okay. Earlier it was used for the three different platform. Now you use for the one platform to settle all the uh, cards. Recommendations to customer that if they are moving to one region, what could be the impact of that? Do you see any disadvantage in doing that? No, we saw that uh, this, uh, instead of that earlier, what they have used and currently what is our system is, is more efficient as well as uh, settlement is on on time, whatever they are expecting. For example, uh, Singapore, whatever they, they started, before that they started, the settlement is done. So they are not waiting for that uh, different region to uh, start the job and process this uh, batch, all this thing. But it's a batch processing, so it can happen in any region. It's not real-time transactions or... Yes. 
Okay. Yeah, it is real time transaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you you okay. Anyway, I'm fully involved on the production. Actually, yeah, it is production. Uh... Okay. Uh, so I want to understand a little bit more about uh, you know your responsibilities in in all this entire uh, process. Like yes, your company has done as such a project. What are your responsibilities in in that sort of thing? Yeah, uh, actually, as I told, I have a long time into this project, and uh, uh, before Cloud Journey, uh, I was part of that uh, both the maintenance and uh, application support side. And when we started slowly our Cloud Journey to this our project uh, i slowly involved to this uh, cloud side uh, to integrate all this uh, as i told how to will be start up make uh, automated to uh, job process through the pipeline instead of that we are running manually and generate this artifact and push that artifact to either jfrog or uh, nexus but right now also we are using the nexus to push our artifact uh, but uh, that is earlier it was by manual process uh, and currently we did through the automated process to uh, all the instead of that uh, building through or uh, generating this image docker image through the kubernetes cluster we we make all this as a uh, automated process okay you are still emphasizing a lot of on we did it or so my suggestion would be in your real interview if this kind of question is there you say what you did what was your role? Okay, okay. That was the specific okay. ask. What you did in that? Because you have previously yeah. explained me what the organization did, but usually yeah. within that uh, product or there are certain specific roles, right? That are yeah. you managing the CICD part of it, or are you working as yeah. an architect, or are you working as a oh, that sort yeah. of so apart from that uh, CI/CD side, and I took the one responsible for that uh, S3 bucket, uh, where uh, we have been uh, placing all the PC because this is the, our uh, car settlement is part of that uh, PCI and non PCI compliance. Mm -hmm. So I'll be take care more on the S3 bucket. How we will be place our uh, internal report, the Jasper report, to this particular uh, bucket, uh, depend upon the regions, so that user will be not having issue to go and access to the particular. Uh, we have set up rule. So in S3 bucket, what will be the, uh, if any EMEA region user will be try to access, then what will be the bucket name? So depend upon the bucket name, we have a gen I created one policy. So I will not, uh, uh, if, if for uh, example, if we have uh, some PCI report is there and on PCI report is there. Non PCI report have been access to all IAM okay. user, but PCI report, even though also IAM user having the access, but they cannot uh, access for particular uh, uh, is bucket. Is there a have... role in the PCI or? Like how how did you make your software compliant in this case? Uh, mostly we have a make, make a, first is that role based. Okay, so role based means I I given one example for S3 bucket. So even though also every uh, my team member all user having I am use access they cannot access particular uh, folder because this having that customer data PCI data. Mm -hmm. So what we will do we will be write that bucket policy. So we can restrict that uh, all the IAM user, but we have to allow who is the user then want to access that particular. A apart from the root user, we have given, I, I will get regularly that type of request. Uh, so for example, XYZ user want to access this report. So I'll be uh, or run that uh, uh, report through this. Uh, uh, I'll be uh, apply that rule and run this uh, through CloudWatch and it will be, uh, then after that, I will be send mail to the user that, yes, you have access now this particular bucket, you can uh, download or you can access that report. But how do you pro prove it to the auditor that, that this is what you have configured? Yeah, actually, yes, we have a, like, a, a, we have a, a part of that PCI compliance because it's car settlement. So I involved yearly once with the, both our client and our uh, user uh, during the audit. We have a PCI DSSI audit is there. And during that time, they will be asked randomly, uh, what are the service requests? They will be pick one request, a service request, and ask me to open that service request through this uh, our console. Whether this, whatever the request came, whether it, they want to deny access or allow access for the user, then I. I need to be so to us into this console that yes, well, this request we got last month and uh, we have did perform this action and uh, we have made that report. And uh, this is one scenario for the audit. Second thing is that uh, we have uh, some patch is going on for our application. And there also they are asking what are the patch number and when it was happened. 
and uh, i was uh, as a involved of this uh, during this uh, patch side so i will be share that yes this this that we have did the patch into our production system mostly we do for the uh, audit for production system only but when a batch was processed is something cloud trail will anyway tell you right that's uh yes batch uh, yeah that that we actually we, we share the log but even though also they are asking the particular uh, uh, service request or maybe any scr or pcr uh, they want to see that whether they, we did the whatever the requirement wise we did the performance or not yes cloud trail also they can build it also but uh, yeah can that also part of this uh, can you tell me five good practices or best practices that you brought in your ci cd process uh yeah uh first priority as a de devops engineer uh, we need to first priority is that to make a secure uh, both its infrastructure side as well as application side second thing is that uh, uh, how reliable to this uh, means how our system will be uh, robust so that uh, even we will not find any issue when start of start to end of this processing of this batch to this pipeline is that batch a means that a job that uh, stages whatever you define the role of devops engineer or your in your case is that the pipeline should pass is that the objective uh, no no if, uh, see we have a example is that we, uh, before also we start this uh, cloud journey we have a sonar queue was there so first thing is that once uh, build is done then mm -hmm. no, before build when you will compile this code we will run the test cases the test cases it will be go both it will go to this uh, sonar queue for analysis then it will be find out that whether this uh, code whatever they have moved to this system till now has been any bug or any vulnerability or any uh, code smell their data will be so as a uh, pass or fail so we have defined that criteria if this percent is 80 percent or 70 percent then we will be passed this uh, values to for uh, code uh, that will be will not define that will be our uh, art, application architect will be sit with us and they will be define this thing and that same thing will follow into this our pipeline and same thing a uh, second thing is that uh, we have introduced a uh, trivi as well as a uh, dependency check so what are the pom files we have uh, that whatever the, the, this pom file having the dependencies uh, if any issue in that or uh, any vulnerability or any uh, it has been uh, that also it will be uh, scanned through the dependency check Okay. So but that practice also are following. Secure, uh, scan continuously, and uh, yeah. second was your uh, uh, the robustness of the pipelines and stability yeah. of the pipelines. Scan we are doing for two side. One is file side scanning as well as image side scanning. Okay. So both the report are generating. Any other thing that you have? Is it something you have implemented? I am assuming. Yeah, actually, as I told, uh, I started my. Uh, cloud journey from this project so i was uh, fully involved from this uh, day one uh how we will be set up all this thing and apart from that i also focus on cost optimization and uh, we did say uh, i did some uh, cost optimization script through this lambda and uh, to find out what are the tail state of that uh, particular service or uh, if any instances optimization strategies for a kubernetes cluster oh uh, yeah See, Kubernetes cluster side, we have not doing that much because it is already uh, for a control plan already taken care by the AWS and worker node only we will be take care. And uh, for for this, uh, we have not done that much of. Uh, but you said you worked on your environment is Kubernetes driven, right? Yes, 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 yes. And you said uh, you worked on cost optimization. So what what was that? Cost optimization through this uh, AWS service side, not through. Or like a uh, like a water for example if any pod is not running or uh, if any pod uh, inside that pod in any container is not able, able to access but uh, that is normal manual process we are doing so we are running through the either through oh, we, we can check through the uh, no, chart. Really. you tell me your experience about cost optimization how much cost have you saved for your customer and what activities was what strategies you adopted yeah, for cost of recently we had one issue that uh, uh, when we will be run any lambda function, there will be some value in it to be set either three second or four second, depend upon that. Minimum set is three second, but uh, uh, one of the my team member has increased that uh, five second to five minutes. 
so we found that uh, cost has been increased that more because we got every month billing so we found out that uh, this billing cycle this this has been increases more then we i investigated and found that uh, one of our team member has increased that uh, uh, reset value from 3 second to 5 minutes so we have asked our team member to that is that is a misconfiguration you debug a uh, misconfiguration found yes. an, yes. yeah, 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 you found an issue fixed it but that's not optimization optimization is yeah. it is 3 seconds either you take it to 1 second or you create a strategy which saves customer cost which is less than 3 seconds yeah Uh, so one of the cost of optimization is that uh, when we will get that service request to create EC2 instance, uh, sometimes the developer will ask to create the EC2 instance along with the uh, they will be want a pre-install of uh, either uh, uh, Jenkins or Java Maven. They need to want to pre-install to their system. Okay, for do for example, they want to do some testing. So mm -hmm. what we did earlier, we have do all the setup for them like a. Uh, private subnet public subnet like that we have set everything if, if you will create the private subnet then automatically one nat gateway will be allocated with the, uh, elastic ip mm -hmm. so it will be cost more to the company even though also will be test in development environment is not required to allocate ip address for particular uh, development team so if you will be going to this mobs or pre prod then we will be need this uh, uh, elastic ip so in that case we have a reduce some cost so whenever we are creating any issue to instance for them to pre install with jenkins or maven or java we are not uh, we are giving them directly this public subnet we are not allowing them to we are not allowing them to create any private subnet so that uh, we will be that billing will not increase through this ip that okay. elastic ip 